The Celtics are staring at what I would consider a disastrous year. 12.01 a.m., Magic's at uh, LeBron's house. Polinka should have been at Paul George's house. Both of these games are right there for the taking. There have been a dozen previous games right there for the taking. The best player on the planet has to close. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Well, if, are we talking, I don't know if we're talking about Genie Bus at the top or Magic, Magic and Rob and Palinka, Magic and Palinka. It goes back further than most people acknowledge. Now, we don't know what Paul George would have done. Maybe he would have stayed in Oklahoma City. But part of why he didn't really strongly consider the Lakers, because they kind of softened on him. They started thinking LeBron and Kawhi. Instead of, remember how they were so much in mm, on Paul George? Okay, yeah. And then, I'm not saying they didn't want him to some degree. But obviously but they, him and his camp felt that. Right, no question. Like, 12.01 a.m., Magic's at uh, LeBron's house. Polinka should have been at Paul George's house. Mm. They should have recruited him just as hard as they did LeBron. Now, nobody saw him playing as well as he is now, but can you imagine him and LeBron together if he is playing like this? And they wouldn't have had to recruit him, by the way. They could have traded for him. They, they, that, could have done that. You're they right. could have traded for You're him right. and just said, we're not going to re rely on Lakers' exceptionalism right. to get him there. Just, re real quick, that what the other point here, Jeannie Buss is wrong. She's either knowingly or unknowingly just, lying. The word she's using, entire roster. And, yeah, and, listen, it never was the entire And, and when she calls it, just throws that fake news slur out there. Like, mm. the, the people reporting on this, whether it's Broderick Turner mm -hmm. in Los Angeles or Chris Haynes or Tanya Ganguly, these are credible reporters right. who were not making this up. Right. And it's toxic for the fans who think reporters are just going to make things up. If you're a credible reporter, Chris, you know this better than I do, you are not running with specific names unless someone who is in a position to tell you right. these things has told you these things. So she's just flatly The only leg she has to stand on is there were reports that, like, of six players and things like that. What I'm told is it was like... It, take any of these six players. Like, take three or four right. of them we're rather than of these. we're going to send six guys mm -hmm. to you for two and things like So she's nitpicking and then using that to semantics. paint everything with a broad. Right, right, right. So that's the first thing with the front office. Mm -hmm. Secondly is the composition of the roster. And LeBron has something to do with this. LeBron was looking at it like, look, you can't outshoot Golden State. We tried that in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. The Cavs shot more threes than the Warriors the last few years because they tried to outshoot them. So he, he thought, let's get some gritty, tough grinders, defenders that we can switch everything. We can be tough with Lance and Rondo because that was the formula they used when they beat them in 2016. So, and he, so he's thinking that. And, but at the end of the day, Magic and Palinka are in charge. Mm -hmm. And so they – the buck stops with them. We've all been watching James Harden go absolutely berserk on the rest of the NBA. But is this the most dominant statistical run we've ever seen? I'm gonna answer that question for you. Here are the five most dominant streaks in NBA history. And for all you stat heads out there, this is post NBA ABA merger in 1976. So no Wilt Chamberlain. At number five, Steph Curry, February 2016. Over an 11 game stretch, Steph averaged 36.7 points, 7.3 assists, and shot 53.6% from three point land. It was absolutely ridiculous. Of course, Golden State won 10 of the 11 games. They went on to win 73 that season, and Curry had his second MVP award. At number four, Kobe Bryant, March 2007. This is a year after he dropped 81 points on the Toronto Raptors. Kobe joined Wilt Chamberlain as the only players in history to have a four game streak of 50 or more points in each game. And the Lakers won every game. Kobe dropped 65 on Portland. He dropped 50 on Minnesota. He dropped 60 on Memphis and another 50 on New Orleans and shot 54% from the field. At number three, Michael Jordan. 
the last 24 games of the 88-89 season. His coach, Doug Collins, put him at point guard. And we got a taste of the type of numbers Jordan would put up if he was as ball dominant as a lot of the guys today. Bringing the ball up court, making all the passes, all the shots, all the decisions. He averaged 30 points, 11 assists, and nine rebounds a game. In one 11 game stretch, he had 10 triple doubles, including seven straight. MJ all day, baby. At number two, James Harden. December 13, 2018 to the present. He's had 21 straight games of at least 30 points. That's the longest streak since the merger. You've heard it before. He's averaged 43 points, eight assists, and eight rebounds during the streak. And one of the most impressive things is without Chris Paul for any of the games, the Rockets have gone 15 and six. All right, so if James Harden's not number one, who could it be? Russell Westbrook. The last three seasons. Here's how good he's been. The triple-double, which was this haloed statistical achievement, has become ho-hum for Westbrook. He does it all the time. This guy's averaged a triple-double for three years. We never thought we'd see another player since Oscar Robertson do it. We didn't think Magic would do it. He didn't. We didn't think LeBron could do it. He didn't. We didn't think Jason Kidd could do it. He didn't. Nobody's done it except Russell Westbrook. Everybody's starting to hate on Russ, but this is still a tremendous statistical accomplishments. It's incredible what this guy is doing. And oh, by the way, the Thunder are 62 and 19 in the last three years when Westbrook has a triple double. So his triple doubles are great for Oklahoma City. Russell Westbrook's run these last three years is the greatest statistical run in NBA history. Joined by FS1 NBA analyst Steven Jackson. Good morning, morning. Steven. You know, we need to get your take on this. We haven't heard from you in a bit. What's wrong with the Lakers? Well, it's, you see a lot of what's been going on all year. You know, LeBron come here, kind of what KD said, the media frenzy. You know, then you go to, okay, we're trying to get AD, that frenzy. The, then you go to the players. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be here frenzy. I don't know if I can trust him frenzy. Is he really trying to trade me? Is he telling nope. me this frenzy? Then you get to the point where, okay, now there's no trade. Now guys are pointing fingers at each other because a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. you said I wouldn't be here. I don't know if I was going to be here. I want to try to help the team get out of the slump. So it's more of a everybody pointing fingers, and, and it goes to show that everything they've been through this year, it goes that the team is in turmoil mm -hmm. and the play is starting to show. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell they're not on the same page when LeBron is throwing the ball out and hitting the back. He don't do stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So it's a frustration. So it's even starting to take a toll well, is it, is on the best player in the world. Or just a lack of focus. Like, no, it's, it's, it's frustration. <laughs> uh, uh, it's frustration, Skip, because it's, it's finally starting. To, it's taking toll on him now. Huh. It's been taking toll on the young players. You know, we expect that. But I'm not counting them out. We're still talking about LeBron. Those young guys still can play. Um, it's going to be hard to, to pick up those four games, but I still think LeBron can do it. I think <clears throat> the biggest thing I see is defensive. You can't keep giving up 33 points in the first quarter, giving up 64 points at the half. Mm -hmm. You give up 64 points at the half, that's 128 for the game. You're going to lose most of those games. Right. And that's what they've been doing. They're not good enough to overcome the lapses that they have defensively. Mm -hmm. Because it, LeBron, what LeBron is used to is having shooters. They don't have shooters. They have to play an almost perfect game in order for them to win. And veterans. And, ve and the thing is, if you look at, they, they, okay, they'll play the pick and roll. They'll close it out, or they'll show, or Rondo will fight over the top, and then the next minute, <laughs> they forget, JaVale backs off, the get, get, guy gets a wide open 15-footer. Mm -hmm. You look at that lineup, and I said this, and I told Skip, I said, Skip, Rondo was knocking down shots, but if he's not knocking down those shots, mm -hmm. they're a small team. You're yes. going basically out there with three threes, a two, and a point guard, and they got pounded on the board. Phoenix, pound them, plus 11. Milwaukee. Because they got great size. Pounding them, plus 13. You're not winning like that. If Rondo shooting 12 threes. And both games they had leads, nice side leads. Mm. So when Rondo, Rondo, shooting four, Rondo shooting 12 threes. Look, yeah, he, he got he to gotta, he gotta contribute more. The veterans got to contribute more. LeBron can't <laughs> lead you in points, assists, and rebounds every night. That's why they're not winning. Every night, Skip. You heard what Stack say. Stack say the man. Every night. Every night. So can we get some help? A little help. 
This is not the Eastern Conference, LeBron. So I'm, I, I hope he comes to the media one day and say, okay, now I really see that the Western Conference is a different oh. monster. Mm. Because if he was in the East, we wouldn't be talking about this. Mm. He'll still be at the top. You know, and, and he's not used to being in a situation where he's losing. And at the end of the season, you know, he's talking about uh, the players don't need to be looking at the records and the clock and stuff. Well, he used to looking at it because he used to he looking at it to see if he was at the top of the East fighting against Boston the last couple of years. Here, it's a different story in the West. What did he tell you last year? Mm. He said, I don't care if I'm the first seed, second seed, AC, or mustard seed. Right. <laughs> With LeBron James coming to he said, if I come to your building, you got problems. Yeah. Now, he go to people building. The Lakers got problems. Even Phoenix's building? I, I just said Even, that, yes. What's it called? Talking stick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, got, you got problems at talking stick? At talking stick. Whipping stick. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Come on, Skip. That ain't the name of the building. You made that up. I did not. <laughs> talking name stick of it? resort it's just, arena. I took That's it. Talking stick resort right. arena. Let's so you lost, to, you lost that at the casino. <laughs> they were at the, that was a casino. Yeah, but at the same time, Golden State losing to Orlando, so uh -huh. you can't really pay attention mm. to stuff like that. So here we go again. Poor LeBron just doesn't have enough help. <laughs> he, he doesn't have enough help. Right, yeah, Poor I'm tired here. that. Poor kid. Get him, Skip. Here we go. Both of these games are right there for the taking. There have been a dozen previous games mm -hmm. right there for the taking. Mm -hmm. The best player on the planet has to close. He is the best setup man in basketball because he will put you right on the verge of closing the game. Mm -hmm. Then he needs to close it. The kids are still too much kids to close right. these games because these are feeling like playoff games. And Kuzma, doesn't, he's not there yet. And Brandon Ingram will still attack, but then he starts to shrink a little bit at the end because he doesn't really – he's not sure, is it really my turn to do this? Right. It's up to LeBron, and you keep talking. He's more magic than Michael, right? He is. But you can be magic only so long. And then with three minutes left in the game, you have to go full on Michael Jordan. If you're about to pass him on the all-time scoring list, you got to show us you can be him when it matters. Or even Kobe. Or even – we can go Kobe. We, we talked about this earlier. you got to be Kobe. Tonight. Well, he, okay, can be, tonight. Well, he can be Magic Johnson game six against Philly. 42, 15, okay. 7, he's right. going to be that, that magic. that didn't happen very often. No, but I'm saying, if he's going to be that magic. Right. Okay, so let's go back to Friday night. LeBron hit a three, and I was highly impressed because they just dared him to shoot it with 3.11 left, and he just flat out clean ripped it. And all of a sudden, boom, that, that arena just erupts, and they're up two with three minutes left, and Giannis goes down and charges, and it's Lakers ball. You got the ball in your hands with three minutes left. Who do you have to charge on? He, he ain't did. playing no D. Well, they tell me well, LeBron ain't playing no D. Who he had a charge on? Well, he can always just stand flat. Don't do that. See, there you go, Skip. Come on, come on Shane. Come on, Shane. Yeah. The last two he games he been... played D. The last two little, games. I've last seen two, some you, efforts. You just some yeah, last two. Yeah. Last two? Yeah, last so, two. So it took it this long. It took this long. Right? It took this long. He's too admit it. We missed okay. a third of the season with injury. He haven't been, okay. he haven't been running so, down so shots So the ball is in your hands. And again, I could tell you a hundred ways LeBron could close against Milwaukee, but he doesn't. The Bucks go on a 15 to 2 run at Staples, and it is over like that. It yes. just happened like that. And you're like, Deep. wait a minute, what just happened? Defense. Rondo and LeBron don't connect on a pass, and it's like, what are you guys doing? So they give the ball back, then LeBron gets an offensive foul because the refs don't give him any respect anymore. They're just like, you cry too much. We're not going to give you anything. You're 6'9", 280 pounds. We're giving you nothing. Mm -hmm. So he gets the offensive foul, and all of a sudden I look up, and the game is virtually over. And LeBron gets an easy layup at the end of the game. And then what did he do? 14 seconds left, he starts walking. And he keeps walking, and he keeps walking, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And by the time the clock is out, he's walking up the tunnel. And it, it, the, the body language is, I ain't associated with that mess out there. I'm not part of that mess. You blame those guys, don't blame me. And then he goes in the locker room. The first thing he says is, everybody talks about Giannis, but it's the supporting cast. They've surrounded Giannis with a great cast. They did. Fingers they pointed. Have. Come on now. Fingers I know you pointed. can't say that. You can't say that. You, you yeah. just can't say it because you've had enough trouble. You want to ship out half the locker room for AD. And all of a sudden, you're just basically just rubbing their noses in it in the locker room after a close loss to Giannis. And Giannis wasn't great. He's still got a knee issue. They got a good supporting cast, but there are a lot of spare parts. And you make a great coach, cast. too. They got a good And you coach. make LeBron. That's, that's you, a, you, you got a that's great a good coach. point. And you make LeBron point for him. With Giannis hurt with 16 points. Mm -hmm. He didn't close. 
Brogdon got two and not Brogdon. Bledsoe Bledsoe got two and one. Yeah, thirty. Brogdon knocked that knocked down three in the he corner. Big. You see and the. That difference? was after the turnover on the inbounds by KCP. They just fell all apart. It, what is KCP okay. doing? They got three guys around LeBron, and he's still trying to throw it to him. Mm-hmm. With all that's going on, with all the players not understanding where they rolls or if they can take a shot, if they can yep. overstep LeBron, with all that's going on, what is Luke Walton doing to keep the peace in his locker room? Nothing. Nothing. But you know why? Nothing. Because they don't respect him. They don't. They don't. Yeah, he don't. They they don't. don't. Yeah, they, they, they been left. left when you got guys like Mike Beasley going at a coach, <laughs> like when, when I was on the injury list, I would never say nothing to Pop. If I, if I wouldn't get in the game, I would never have the, the audacity to say nothing right. to Pop. When you have guys like that going mm. at the coach, there's no respect on the team. Mm. No respect for the and coach. And you would go at Pop occasionally. When I was playing. Well, I know. I got when it. I came out the game, stuff like that. But if I had no room huh. or if I had nothing to, to stand on, mm. I, I, I played my role. You know, and I would I would never try to show up uh, Greg Popovich. It's always something that I feel I was right, but at the end of the day, he's the coach. Right. They was just they just showing Luke up. Even in the media, they was talking about. Uh, next twenty games, I think the Lakers are out of the playoffs. Four and a half back. Uh, teams in front of them, I think now are better and certainly more unified. With that, we go to New York City. Uh, first things first. You hear him on our show all the time. Chris Broussard via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Chris, I said this. LeBron's still a great player. But um, when you're on the stage and people are looking up at you, be it the Pope in St. Peter's Square, be it Tony Robbins, uh, be it TED Talks, when you're on the stage and people are looking up at you, you're a leader. But the really engaging moment is when you step off the stage as a politician and you meet people eye to eye in a selfie, in in a high five, in a fist bump. LeBron's been on the stage for 12 years, and most of the time he has connected very well with teammates. You know, J.R. Smith's not a great player. He reached down. James Jones, one of his best buddies. I think, Chris, LeBron's had a bad year in leadership where he's done too many star-driven projects. He's never come off the stage and connected with Luke, connected with some of the young players. That's just my takeaway. He's still a great player, great guy. But I don't think it's been a great LeBron leadership year. How's that land for you? Well, I, I, Colin, I think the main difference between this year with LeBron and the previous four, at least, has just been the winning. You know, there's different ways to lead a team. Uh, we can look at all of the guys or a lot of them that we consider great leaders in the past. And the reason their leadership was good was because they won. Michael Jordan, he, we know he punched out Steve Kerr. We know he had issues with some teammates here and there. He told his teammates – don't pass the ball to Bill Cartwright. And Cartwright <laughs> said, I'll break your legs if you ever say that again. You know, I mean, Kobe Bryant, I, I came on your couch and said, Kobe was a good leader. Why? He won five rings. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, had he punched out Bill Lambeer. Isaiah Thomas ran Adrian Dantley, a great player, out of town in Detroit and got his buddy Mark Aguirre there. I mean, LeBron had his drama in the past four years. I mean, yeah, there's some different things now, but let's not forget the cryptic tweets. Yeah. Let's not for, or Instagram, whatever it was. Let's not forget the issues with Kevin Love. Are you in buying in, buying out? Whatever, he, whatever it was, he said. Kyrie Irving, David Blatt. I mean, LeBron's had this type of drama the past four years. The difference was they won. They got to the Eastern Conference, or the, they got to the finals. And they won one championship, so we looked at it as great leadership. Now he's doing similar things, some a little different, but similar things, and they're not going to make the playoffs. Yeah. So we're looking at it as, whoa, Michael Jordan's last season in Washington. Colin, I was there. I covered a lot of it for the New York Times. Those players who grew up idolizing MJ, they couldn't stand him by the time it was over. Why? He was the same MJ as he was in Chicago. The one difference was in Chicago, he's leading you to championships. In Washington, he wasn't quite good enough anymore to even get you in the playoffs. Good stuff. Chris Broussard joining us. Um, You know, you and I had this discussion a couple weeks ago, is that outside of Tom Brady, it all works the same way for even superstars. There's a domino effect. They have a big injury. They don't make the playoffs. Uh, Suddenly, they're off the front page. They're on page three of the sports section. So LeBron now, first major injury, not going to make the playoffs. Chris, if they don't land AD, 
Is he on page two of the sports section? Yeah, yes. I mean, it, it, there's no doubt about it. It's AD or bust for the Lakers. And even if they get AD, look, I'm not ever going to write LeBron James off right now as a guy that won't win another championship. But if you put a gun to my head, AD or not, and said, is LeBron James going to win another championship? Your life depends on it. I would say, no, he's not. Uh, now, that said, let me go here. I actually think LeBron could have a very successful run here with the Lakers. You see, he's still a great player, as you said. But I, this year, at least, he da- isn't able to dominate the game right. like he used to. Okay, his numbers are still what they always are, but he's not dominating the game, controlling the actual game like he has in the past. I think LeBron could use that for a good thing because one of the strengths of his game and weaknesses of his game throughout his career has been that he does everything. I had a guy who won championships a few years ago tell me LeBron would win more rings if he just did one thing. Either be Magic Johnson at point guard and average 22 points and 12 assists, or be a small forward, a real small forward, and lead the league in scoring and get nine or 10 rebounds. Because he does everything that makes it hard to, for players to play around him. Right. Not role players. Role players can't do much. So they need you to create everything for them and give them the ball and they can shoot it. Yeah. But other talented players, It's harder. So as he declines a little bit, why not go to a straight point guard, period, or go to a straight small forward, period, and then it'll be easier for other players with talent to play around you, and maybe you could win more. Yeah, by the way, this is a great point. As your skills decline, uh, you can't do as many things well, then just zone in on the one thing you do well. Chris Broussard, very good point, finally. Kyrie Irving is a great player. Okay, but something's not working, Chris, because Boston is worse with him on the floor. I just told Joy, when you get an Antonio Brown or a Kyrie, we know they're great. Generally, if they're struggling with what appears to be a great situation, there's a relationship issue in the building. We know Antonio Brown's was Big Ben. What is going on with Kyrie in that building, Chris? What do your sources say? Because he is an unhappy dude right now. Yeah, he is. Um, I, I, I have not been told of a poor relationship in the building. Uh, I've actually been told that off the court, his relationships with a Jason Tatum, a Terry Rozier are fine. I'm not saying they're bosom buddies, but they're, they're fine. It's more the on the court chemistry. Remember last year in the playoffs, we talked about it, Colin. The, the team went from being Kyrie's to Brad Stevens' team. He was the superstar. Remember, Kyrie wasn't even there for what was it, a game seven yeah. in the playoffs. It wasn't a good look. Uh, so you wonder, did that bother Kyrie? The fact, and we know that's been a source of the problems in Boston is that the young guys feel like they went far without him. And do they really need him? And he sensed that because he said it repeatedly in the public. So that is bothering him right there. But I I really think, too, Colin, that Kyrie has let the media criticism really deflate him. Yeah. If you look at before the All-Star game, there was a six or seven game stretch where he averaged 30 points, 10 assists, led him to a six and one record and was looking fantastic. Like he is taking over the team and they're winning. And then at the All-Star break, he's criticized because he and KD are in the hallway talking. And he's, you know, people make a big deal out of him staying on the court for KD's, you know, MVP award session after the All-Star game. And, And he talked about how he hated that. And notice from that point on, his answers to the media have been small, clipped, basically no comments. You saw the clip you showed earlier, him walking in the arena saying, I won't miss this stuff when I'm done playing. So I think he's let this media criticism deflate him. He's got rabbit ears kind of like Kevin Durant. And you wonder, both of those guys are talking about going to New York. Uh, It's worse in New York. So that's going to be interesting to see if that impacts their decision. Chris Broussard, good seeing you, bud. Nice work today. Thanks. I think so. I mean, look, I'm – 
losing faith in them. But I do think that, like, I have more faith in them than the Lakers. Um, well, yeah. Turning it around. <laughs> yeah. That's not saying much. But here's the three things I think have to happen. One, You're still going to need a dang on Leprechaun to get this one. <laughs> I like, think, I can understand saying, oh, yeah, I got more confidence than them than the Lakers. Lakers. But, yeah. yeah. I think well, they, they got Philadelphia's <laughs> number. They need to help Philadelphia remains in that four slot. You know, because they, they could pass Indiana. I don't think they want Indiana in the first round because I just think they're, ma- they're a tough matchup for the Sixers, even though the Sixers have more talent. But for the Celtics, Kyrie, number one, has, he has let the media criticism deflate him. Mm-hmm. And you can see it in the way he's responding to the media. Like, remember he had that 30, like that streak about six games, seven games, where he averaged about 30 and 10 right before the All-Star break. Mm-hmm. And they went six and one in those games. Then at the All-Star break, everybody, you know, he's talking with Kevin Durant in the hallway and the media makes a big deal out of it. He stays and watches the MVP ceremony with KD on the court for the All-Star game. The media makes a big deal. And he has come out and talked about it and he's let it deflate him. And I think it's impacting his play to some degree. So I think that's number one. He's got to do some soul searching, get his swag back and not worry about all the outside stuff. Secondly, some of the other players, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they have become more isolation players, yeah. too. Bad shots right. waiting to happen. Remember, now, last year it was just do what Brad says and we do that. Mm-hmm. Now they've gotten a little bit better. They're feeling themselves a little more. So they're going ISO. And I also think, you know, when you play basketball, when one of your guys is ISO, that's contagious. Mm. And I think with Kyrie playing that way, they have become that. The they need to re- They need to realize, look, What's going to help our stock, Jason and Jalen, is if we win. Yes. Nobody's looking at your numbers necessarily. It's if you win. Right. And then the third thing, Brad Stevens, and I know you've talked about it, and rightly so, can he handle the superstar egos and all that? He's going to have to make a hard decision with Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward, since the All-Star break, 23 minutes a game, 31% shooting, five points a game. 30. <laughs> He's taking minutes from some of these young guys who already mm-hmm. – are bucking. We've made a big deal out of Kyrie's return, but we need to really look at Gordon Hayward's return and him taking minutes from these guys and hurting the chemistry. So those three things have to happen for them to turn. I, I agree with your your list of three things. Where I disagree with you is the idea the idea that winning a first round series is somehow some silver lining for this team. Anything short of a very competitive conference finals appearance is an abject failure by the Boston Celtics. Let's make the, they've made the conference finals each of the last two years. East was a lot they, weaker. Okay, but they were they were projected to be at the top of this strong. Do they have East. more talent than Toronto? To Toronto? What more talent than Toronto? I don't think when, so. No. When they started the season, we thought on paper, pick these rosters. I'll take that roster. I now we've seen Toronto's role players get better. And then also, we didn't know if Kawhi was going to be top five or not. Now we see top five on both ends of the court. Yeah. So now it doesn't look like it. But before the season, I think we it, took the side. It was very controversial of me to not have them in the NBA Finals. They oh, had the I, didn't, second, I didn't have them there either. They had the second highest projected win total of any team in basketball going into this season. How many times did we hear? That I mean, they made the conference finals last year, and they're getting two All-Stars. Now, it turns out they only got one All-Star because Gordon Hayward, and I totally agree mm-hmm. with you. And that is the one movable piece as far as move him to the bench mm-hmm. that is doable for this team because you can say, listen, man, it's not about long-term. It's just about mm-hmm. the injury. But, see, you brought up the fact, how long has Brad Stevens known Gordon Hayward? Oh, man, since high school. Right. Since he's – like he's He built a program decision. at Butler right. around him. Right. And so that the, there's the emotional and human element there for th- that decision. But right. the Celtics are staring at what I would consider a disastrous year. Because whether they get bounced in the first round or the second round, Kyrie's gone if that's the result. The only chance to keep him is a deep playoff run. And what evidence do we have from this team that they are capable of winning four of seven against a good team? Yeah, we don't have the evidence. We can say we appropriate that like the way we used to do with LeBron. Oh, man, the Cavs don't look good. But we believe in LeBron. There's nothing that we have. Brad Stevens, we did have that. Oh, man, we Brad Stevens is going to be able to – Get them through this. Uh, no, we don't have that. We could be, man, they're, they're an elite defensive team. Sometimes they are. Most of the times they're not. Offensively, their inability to have a system, and the system that works for them worked better when they had less talent because 
in that system, it doesn't require your individual ability to be able to score the basketball. But what happens is when you have a player like Kyrie, and I'm watching him, because Jalen Brown and Tatum, I'll use them as examples, this offseason, they worked on their individual game. Because when you're in the gym as a player, you're not thinking about the team. I'm working on myself. Kyrie's working on himself. Tatum's working on himself. So all of them came back to training camp. And you know what? After an exciting postseason, each one of them thought, I can do more. I got more moves. I got more stuff I can do. I can't wait for my second year. Terry Rozier, he's got his own agenda. I want to be a starter. I want to be paid. So now you got all these different stories that people are trying that are bigger in their life than the Celtics winning. That's why I don't believe. I don't believe they're going to be able to get back on the same page. I always believe Ty Lue talked about it. Man, Kyrie Irving is not about that team and ball movement. He is about, uh, I can take him off the dribble. I can take him <laughs> off the bounce. And that does not fit in the Brad system. So I don't see him turning it around, Chris. This is why you typically don't see teams with a lot of young players contend. Because when you're uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are in their rookie scale deal, when you're a rookie in that four year window or whatever, your your main goal and and I gotta be honest, I think rightly so, establish yourself right. as a star, you right. so you can get that of big course. deal. Kyrie did Kyrie didn't come close to winning early in his career because that's LeBron didn't really either or his first few years. Mm-hmm. You want to establish yourself as a star, then you get that max deal. Then that's usually when the winning you start becomes the priority, yeah. Yeah. and that's a problem. I, I, I still have a little faith uh, in that day, but I think Toronto and Milwaukee are just better. Okay, like so I, you I think their ceiling is the second round anyway. I don't think that's their ceiling. I would not be shocked if they can get past a Milwaukee or a Toronto. Milwaukee, we haven't seen do it. I like picking up Pau Gasol, some mm-hmm. experience, but they don't really have much experience going deep. Toronto, I think, is is better than Boston, but I give them a shot. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review.